hosting this show is meeting my friends, you know, and asking them questions live on air, right? Great. And just the regular conversations mm -hmm. we have behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I found out about you in the early days, it was mostly around your, your stagecraft. Mm. If, if I had to define you in terms of if is, is Kemi a movie person or a stage person, I'd pick stage. Yeah. Especially because the stage part of this craft is is kind of different. Yes. It's unique. Yes. What's the story? What's the story there? Um, I mean, starting my career as an actor, it was important to me to start off in theatre stage because I didn't have formal training. My first degree is not in theatre arts. So when I decided and I knew within me that this was what I wanted to do, you know, for the rest of my life, I, based on research and studies, I was like, look, if I go to theater, I will learn the things I didn't learn mm. in the university. I will be very grounded. I would learn to work with my body, my voice. I would learn characterization. You know, it was like sending myself to So school. everything you've learned has been through your experiences on stage? Well, after those five years, of course, I've gone for training. Okay. I've done a few workshops. And then acting for film is a different ballgame. You need some training for that. So... Um, I worked on stage for five straight years, which is why, you know, in the early days, I did stage purely for five years. After those five years, I developed confidence and I was able to start going for auditions for the camera. So I'd like to know which is more technical. I ask this question because, so I've always <laughs> had, I've always had conversations in front of cameras. Yes. But I found out that hosting a live show was a <laughs> completely really different thing <laughs> yes. about four weeks ago when I did the right. very first one ever. Right. So what are the technicalities? What's the difference between doing the state thing and doing the um, court repeat and all that. Right. I'm, I just say that both um, media are very technical. And the techniques for both of them are very different. Mm. I don't even know if one is... I, there's no easier or harder one. Mm. They are just very technical. For example, for camera, you the camera is your audience. The camera is a non-living thing. And you have to give a performance for the camera all the time like it's an audience because when people are watching they are responding to what you recorded a while ago you have to remember your takes when you're doing take one take two take three and do the same thing consistently the camera doesn't give you the yeah. reaction that it the doesn't audience the stage you have to remember your continuity you have to remember and then in film you don't shoot in sequence so you can shoot um the morning end. of day one today yeah. and shoot afternoon of day one two weeks time you have to remember so that itself is technical now for stage stage it starts and it finishes mm. in one hour or in two hours and then we're building stage is 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 what you see is what you get there's no i'm sorry i've come in i forgot my line or something so even when you forget you have to create something on the spot yeah improvise you, know, you have to improvise <laughs> um then stage is you are really dependent on your team members mm. you know you say something you're not alone you have to wait for that person this is their line you have to kill them <laughs> <laughs> and it's happened many times mm. you have to kill them or you have to say something that will remind them or you carry on and then they will remember that oh my god i've forgotten you know Stage is also very rigorous because you, you spend five weeks, four weeks in rehearsal and then the lights come on and then you have to perform. The character starts and finishes there and then and the feedback is immediate. There's it's interesting energy. because, you know, when I was in primary school, <laughs> secondary school, university, I did a lot of stage plays. Right. And <laughs> I used to get carried away by the audience. <laughs> like, exactly, you're going to the gallery, you'll be going. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah. the thing is, how, how has this, this stage craft, how has it like helped to bring our culture to the fore? Um, I'll, I'll say very much. I mean, generally, even storytelling, as it were, helps us with our culture. The, more, the beautiful thing about stage is, like I said, the response is immediate. So, for example, I was in a play called Morimi the Musical over December produced by Bolanli Austin Peters. And for many people, and many younger people, they knew nothing about the story of Morimi, mm. nothing about the coming of age of Yoruba land and Ileife. And many people were like, is this thing true? And I'm like, yes, it's true. It really happened. And what that does, you see a play, and it sparks something in you. And then you, you start to ask questions. And if immediately, so for example, at Terra Culture, the books and materials around more in me were sold, which would, you know, educate people more. So that helps people. So the, the state play helps to sell the books and materials? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because people are transported immediately. The thing, it happens in film as well, mm -hmm. you know, but for state, it's immediate. You're like, oh, my God, this is what really happened. You feel it in that moment. And then it helps to just revive memories, revive culture, depending on the play that you're, you're Interesting. performing. Interesting. So you were also talking about... And a lot of those people that didn't connect to the Moremu story initially are millennials. Mm -hmm. How can we make stage as cool as 
as they are film. obsessed with film. <laughs> you know, as sexy as film. I know what you mean. I don't. I don't even know if stage will ever be sexy mm. like film. But I believe in packaging plays and um, packaging plays for your audience is one of the reasons i i mean i've been producing plays now for for a while since 2013 that's uh, six years and um i've come to understand that the way people go out in their numbers to see films they also want to go out in their numbers to see plays but we the um, theater producers are we presenting the plays to them like a film so for example in my case i will cut a trailer for my play and put it on tv i would put a lot of your favorite actors that you watch on screen in a play so that you want to come and see them. The razzmatazz, the PR, the glossiness, the fashion that comes with film, we put it in the play so that you come and you're still entertained. And we don't market the play to only the artsy people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everybody is welcome. Yeah. You know, this idea that it's only artsy exclusive. people. Exclusive. No, we need That's your money. Was, we understand no, it. no, 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 no. <laughs> it's money. I'm not selling market. Like you that. know? I so. also like that you, 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 you broke all that down because I was thinking like, how do we, I don't think we've squeezed the opportunities hmm, enough. Enough. So how do we harness the, the potentials? Because I've been, I've been to a couple of countries and when I see what they Please. do like it's like a movie yes and it's still stage yes. it's a musical it's stage but yes. it feels like it really how do we like bring these things here honestly fortunately or unfortunately stage the, the best of theater cannot be experienced on its own and the artists or the artists are not enough to handle it so that infrastructure is necessary support from the corporate world and government is necessary there's something i always say art is expensive but art is a is a product that should be consumed by everybody Therefore, it needs to be subsidized by government or the corporate world. Do you understand? So we need structure. So you see those experiences you're talking about. We need theaters that are purpose-built. So that word subsidized, is, 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 I would say it is not profitable. I mean, not, not the way it should be. Mm. I mean, we're grateful for people like Bolanli Austin Peters, who has broken, you know, the... The jinx, mm. for lack of a better word, of just doing arts for art's sake by investing in that structure she has and by producing. Now, you see, when a play runs for more than one week, then the play can make money. The beautiful thing about theater is when a play runs, even as, a, as an actor, you don't want mm. to rehearse and do a play once. Mm. You want to do it 10 times. Now, then you don't go to suites. You know what I mean? And what makes that happen is the buy in. The buy in, the location. You need to be able to... Now, an independent producer cannot pay for a theatre for two weeks. Because the mathematics don't make sense. And that's what I mean by it needs to be subsidized. Because if we have... If the National Theatre was working and we had like three or four locations like the National Theatre in Lagos, we would know that the independent producer is not going to spend so much paying for that space. Mm. It's purpose-built. We have stages that can move around. Mm. We can do all the lights and all the gymnastics. It is purpose-built. That way, a play can run for two weeks. Then we can start to calculate the profit. I mean, Paul Alias Business does plays of 100 people. Mm. Me, I don't even have the capacity That's a lot in Nigeria. to do it. Yes, it's a lot. So you can imagine... It's like a whole army. She's, she's producing on that level and still doing her best to make profit. But then she runs, she owns her own space. She controls it. She's built a great cost. You know, for producers like me who are still up and coming and growing, I don't have the capacity yet to produce a hundred man play. We're going to get there very soon. I think, I think Bolan Leo St. Peter's is one of the reasons I'm going to miss December uh, this year because uh, she, she makes she December very, every, very, yes, you know, every some time, big, every big year. Productions. Yes, every year. So for... For an, no, not as a not as a writer now, a producer, mm. for an actor or actress. Yes, yes. How, is it profitable for me to focus on state plays? Can I survive on that? If I'm going to be very honest with you, in the Nigerian industry of today, no, you can't. You you cannot survive working only in stage. It's very sad. It's so sad. I can't survive. It's less glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a story of doom. I you say you don't even try. No, no. But that's the thing. As it is right now, you cannot survive. By working in stage alone. Mm. But what right keeps now. you going? Because it doesn't look like it's one of those things that if we're looking at the things that people look for when mm -hmm. they get in. So you, if, if glamour, if it doesn't pay money, if it brings glamour, you mm -hmm. can trade your glamour, right? For yes. advertising and the yes. like. So yes. what keeps you going? Is it a commitment to the craft? First, of course, it's a commitment to the craft. Um, it's also, for me as an actor, being a rounded actor is a goal for me personally. Being able to perform on all the platforms, television, film, stage, radio, whatever platform i believe that an actor should be able to function everywhere mm. so for me now running my own production company the goal is to produce one big play a year at least 
you know, and this year I'm doing the one, you know, one big play a year, spend the rest of the year working in film and doing other things that bring money, that bring, help build the name, take us more into people's homes, and you know, you know, you have to be a working actor, you have to keep working. That, that sounds like a strategy that one should, should <laughs> yes, use. Yes, oh, and I'm sharing it with the world. So the thing is, what, are there risks to pay attention to when it comes when, to stage play? Oh, definitely. The first risk is losing money. That's the first risk. And I've been there, done that, got a t-shirt for it. You know, and I'm at the point where, so for example, I'm producing a play right now. And I, I haven't produced a play this so big. We talk about that. That's yeah. the wives, right? Yes, the wives. I haven't produced a play this big in three years or four years because I wasn't ready to lose money. Mm -hmm. And I just told myself that if the money wasn't going to add up, I'm not going to do it on this scale. So that's a risk, losing money. Mm -hmm. Creating a product and not paying attention to your audience is another risk. Because sometimes the artists are too stuck in their art and they forget that there is a paying a audience mm. coming to watch it. So if you don't create a product that the audience wants to see, you're it's going to lose. You. It's only you <laughs> stuck on your artistic high. You know, that's another risk. Another risk, of course, is forgetting that it's, a, it's show business. Is there a way that, you know, parents, families can help to boost the, oh. the commercial side of this Oh, stage. definitely. I mean, I grew up watching stage plays. You know, as a child, my father would take us to see plays. We saw plays all the time. Whenever there was a holiday, we went to the National Theatre, Unilag, um, Nigeria Law School, all of that. Families, of course, if you make it a point of duty to take your family or your children to see a play every time they're on holiday or once a month, it would go a long way. If um, schools as well, if you make it a point of duty, there are many books that the students are studying in school. And these books are many times performed on stage. A lot of the plays I studied in school, I, I had already watched mm. as a child. If schools did group, you know, bookings and things for their students, it helps to them. It helps with their experiences. It helps with their education. Offices as well. There are so many other things to do with your staff. There are so many other things to do for your high-flying guests, your high-network individuals, your, your top officials. Take them to see a play. Book a whole theater for your, for your team. Because, because these days, the first thing that comes to mind with respect to something like that mm -hmm. is, is the cinema. Yes. We didn't used to have a cinema culture maybe even like 12 years ago. Yes. But look I can't today. say we really do have it now, but, but it's, it's, it's way much better. better. So is there something that needs to be done to, oh, to make to help it that. play? Definitely. Already, already Lagos State, and I must celebrate the Lagos State government. This is the second time someone is referencing Lagos State. Yes. The Lagos State government has been committed, even from the last dispensation, has been very committed to building the arts and the culture. And there are people on the Arts Council. There's Jacques Silva there, there's Kolea Folayo there, and there's uh, Bolani no Austin Peters. They are on the council. No and as it is, I know Bolani Austin Peters is um, spearheading the project, building six theatres around Lagos. Those theatres will soon be open. We are all looking forward to them. So that place can even I, go I outside think they are the think They are being built in Ikorodu. Yes, there's Ikorodu, Ikeja, there's Ikeja. There's, there are all those locations. Okay. So, for example, it would be great to do a play and go around Lagos and see those places so that everybody in those areas can go see those places. And it wouldn't be as expensive as we are paying for some privately owned theatres. That's I think people want. should pay for what they want to enjoy, though. Yes, but, but guess what? Are you saying that the average person in Ikorodu town doesn't want to spend 5,000 or 10,000 naira on a ticket to see I think the average person in Lagos. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, maybe we should make the ticket 2,000 naira. But if the producer makes 2,000 naira, they're going to run into debt. Yeah, it, it helps that. So I can understand if, if subsidy is defined uh, in, in a certain way, not that it's fully subsidized exactly. forever, like exactly. we subsidize F4. Exactly. So tell us about the wives. Mm, I mean, seeing it on social media, the it looks like it's something one has to come for. <laughs> Yes, you have to come see it. Um, the wives is, this is the second time I'm producing this play, actually. I did it the first time in 2014. Mm. Um, and it's a play written by Professor Ahmed Yerima, who is a writer who puts women, he writes a lot about women. He tells his stories through the eyes of women. And the wives is an entertaining play. I, I tell people, don't worry, it's not deep. It's not, um, there's no serious issue. They were not trying to, you know, be all deep on you. No. It's a very entertaining comedy. A chief dies, a man married to three women, and he dies, and there is a lot of drama around how he died. And he has, he has a first wife who has stayed with him through thick and thin. He has a second if wife. If you say the entire story, people will come. No, don't worry. There's okay. nothing. He has a second wife mm. who is cliche independent, and he has a third wife who is a dumb blonde. What do you mean, cliche independent? She's independent, she, she left the marriage, okay. she's a power woman, she's a feminist, you know, so that's the second wife. And the third wife, 
Is a dumb blonde. So who are the people who are looking for? Say? So yeah, Kate Henshaw is the first wife. Mm -hmm. Shafi Bello is the second wife, and Lala Kiliji is the third wife. He has a sister mm. who's uh, played by Binta Ayomogaji, who's from who's a veteran in her own right. Um, JJ Kusoko will be playing his brother. Um, Tony Oshinaike is playing Babaifa, and Tokwe Tedela is playing Barista Akonde. Interesting, and that's this weekend, right? That's next this, weekend, next actually. Weekend, yes. Interesting. So v, the V monologues mm. kind of brought it to the fore. They brought it to the yes, limelight. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. We've not heard anything about those. No, well, world. the thing is, I mean, the V Monologues was an adaptation of the American story, the Vagina Monologues, and it was um, kicked off by the Kudirat Initiative for Democracy. And like you rightly said, it was the biggest thing I did in my career at the time. I was 19 years old when I was in there, and I produced it in 2013. But the V Monologues has evolved and has metamorphosed into what many people now know to be here word. So here word is what you now know, and here word is another production that's you know is touring the world and is moving around, but it's still talking about the same issues. Okay, I just have to bring that in. So now you're for the wives. You're yes. first of all, why does it keep coming back? And then secondly, your actor, your yeah. director. Yeah. What should you expect on From, both sides? Okay. So um, when you do a play and it succeeds, you do it again. Mm. And since I did the wives in 2014, there's nowhere I go. Mm. When are you doing the wise again? When are you doing the wise again? People really loved it. I just say it's one of the most successful plays that I have produced. And the only reason I didn't do it was I needed the money to make sense. And I'll, I'll come around to why the money might be making sense now. <laughs> but, um, so that's why it keeps coming back. And it's a great play to see, to just laugh and relax. So there's that. I am directing the play this time mm. around. And I'm directing it for the first time. Because the time has come mm. to direct it. Um, the time has come to... You know, many of those ideas I have in my head. Let's put them yeah, out there. Them. Let's express them, you know. My cast is pretty much the same. But this time around, we have two new people. The other time we did, we had Jacques Silvani and Ritiolado, both of whom are unavailable at this time. So we have um, Bintayo Mogaji and um, Shafi Belo. Kate Tensha was in it the last time. I was in it the last time. Jiji Kosoko was in it the last time. So we have these new people on board. And Topo Tetela, he's new on board as well. And um, we're looking forward to it. I'm excited about my cast. They're hardworking. They're have dedicated. you ever taken your plays outside of... Outside of not, not even just UK or US, like other outside. African countries? Not yet. I asked because Nigeria's biggest soft power mm -hmm. is, is our movies and our music. So I, I was just wondering, like... If you took this to Kenya, it's going to be crazy. Yes. They are obsessed with Nigerian content, yes. South Africa, even some yes. countries that you wouldn't think, like yes. Morocco, yes. Ethiopia. You're correct. So are there plans for that? I mean, we're ready to go once we have the money. <laughs> if anybody's ready to fund us, we're ready to go. We're ready. The movement is our watchword. Is there any chance of producing a feature movie after? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I already produced a short film okay. called Fine. And actually, F-I-N-E. F-I-N-E, okay. yes. It's a short film on mental health which would will have a little event around in october but um we premiered at the nollywood um, film festival in paris in in june and coincidentally we showed in a festival in canada on friday so the film is moving around that's my first attempt producing independently um but we are working on two feature films which i cannot talk about it's all right but, but keep right. your ears glued I've, I've heard i don't know maybe it's a myth but i've heard that some people say if you have not being part of a stage play, mm -hmm. you are not yet an actor. <laughs> can you can you say something about that? I think it's a myth, but stage stage is is is, is hard. It's hard because some actors are shy. You'll be amazed mm, that some and, and some screen camera, actors are shy mm. on stage. So if I'm shy, I can't I cannot do stage plays. Some because some people they freeze in front of an audience, in front of a live audience. And there's nothing you can do about it. They have to work on it. The fiercest people sometimes get in front of a live audience and they become very timid. Wow. And that's, the, that's what makes it really, really, really hard. Wow. Thank you so much, Lala. <laughs> I can't wait to get back to you on the feature, the feature films, the Charlie 2 you yes. really want to mention. Yeah. Thank you. See you next weekend. Okay. Um, the, please, everybody should come and watch the play, buy tickets. And this place brought to you courtesy of Mickey and Productions and Why Nigeria. We'll send you an invoice for that. <laughs>